Hi, I'm Tony. This is Slack. Welcome to Smog Vlog. Today we're going to be reviewing the iStick 100 watt TC for you. Ba bang. Alright, welcome back guys. So yeah. Istick 100 watt TC, new from eLeaf. Uh, finally, they're doing TC and doing it properly. They've updated the 100 watt. This is a big improvement over the original Istick 100 watt. Let's unbox this sucker for you. Okay, due to varying scheduling conflicts, I've got lumbered with unboxing this one. Cheers, Slack. Okay, moving on. Here we are with uh, eLeaf's iStick TC 100 watt. There's your bottom of your box, side to side, fairly standard fare. Black, white and grey. Apparently I got the grey one, which should be silver, let's hope. Standard, you know, here's what it is. Here's kind of what's included in the box. Slack's favourite scratch and sniff. And that's about it. Right, let's open this sucker up. And there she is. Right, pop her to one side for a second, see what usual bullshit we get in the box. One USB cable and Slack's favourite wordy thing. The, although that being said, this does look a little bit more wordy than usual. I'm wondering if there's any extra information in there. No, there's not. They're just including a lot more languages now. So get rid of that. Right, moving on to this sucker. Oh, that is upside down. Okay, so your, your buttons are actually at the bottom of the mod. USB port, one magnetic door, two magnetic doors, positive minus, positive minus, there, yeah, bit of battery venting, and a lock button. Presumably that is just to lock the mod from firing. Right, let's get her fitted with some batteries. And there she is coming to life. Fairly strong magnets there for you. I'm wondering if the battery doors can be switched around. The answer to that is no they cannot. <laughs> they go on there one way and that's it. Now the fire button is this side. Now coming to the top if we lock that yeah there is no fire now okay so that's mainly the uh, unboxing done I'll leave it to slack to do the usual button video probably in a few minutes time but for now that's it for this unboxing back to the studio all right thanks for the unboxing tone okay over to tech specs so, eLeaf's latest offering, dual 18650 batteries, 100 watt temperature, temperature control device that uses NITI and stainless steel with adjustable TCR. Okay, so while Slack takes a hit on it, we're going to go up close and show you the button pushes for this sucker. Right, let's look at the button pushes for the iStick 100 watt TC. So here's your go button, and the first thing we're going to need to check is whether we've got this lock on. Okay, we're a bit out of focus here. That is a physical lock that stops you pushing the button. Simple as that. Brilliant. Next up, we come over here, it's the standard affair of five clicks on, five clicks off, and we're on. Okay, so we're still on what the old coil I was. Um, so to change the modes, you have this mode select button here. Press and hold it. You see it's gone from TI to SS there. Um, memory 1, which is for your custom TCR. Memory 2, press and hold. Memory 3. And wattage mode. 
Uh, for complete info, I'm not going to do it because it takes ages to cycle through that way. Next mode is bypass mode, which is mech mode. Obviously, standard adjustments of um, yeah, up and down for your wattage, 0.1 watt increments. Actually, what I will do, I will cycle through after bypass we'll get back to a temp control thing so when you're in temp control you use your plus and minus to adjust your actual desired temperature now over here you can see I'm vaping at 78.6 watts if you want to adjust that you have to press the mode button and one of the up or down buttons so let's say we want to take that power down it will go there let go it's a little bit fiddly it's a bit of a hair trigger while you adjust it I mean it's and to adjust the power back up, menu and up, and uh, it will cycle through. Like I say, still a bit of a hair trigger there. In terms of temperature adjustment, the uh, it's on a sort of round robin thing. Up to the top and it stops scrolling. Press up again and it ducks over to the bottom of um, Fahrenheit. Uh, and again, yeah, just fly through it. Press one more and, and you're in. So, not terrible. At least it doesn't free flop over into the other one, which I hate. While in temp control, you can also lock your resistance. So you've got this little ohm picture down here. Uh, press up and go. Hold that for a moment, and that will turn to a padlock. There we go, you've sort of locked your resistance in case you end up with any wandering coils, which is a nice feature to have. The device has also got a stealth mode. Press down and go together for a couple of seconds. It will come up saying stealth on. And that's it. As you can hear, it's firing away again stealth off. Once we're happy with the settings we've got, if you want you can lock the settings with the up and down button while the device is on. So when locked you'll still be out of fire but yeah obviously it's locked so you can't change your settings. Now the device is off, there's a couple of other menu options available to us. Pressing up and down together will rotate the screen. If you want to adjust your TCR for your memory profiles, press up and fire button together in the off mode. So you can cycle through which one you want to adjust and how much you want to adjust it. Just while we're up close, I uh, thought I'd quickly point out, here's your USB charging and firmware upgrade. Some vent holes there. And there are the vent holes there. Okay, so cheers Slack for those button pushes of information. You'd love it when I press your button. He fucking does it so well. Now, let's talk about the mod. Button pushes. Yeah, so the button quality is awesome. I, I love this go button. It is really, really cool. So it's similar to the XQ2. Um, in the whole, the whole side, pretty much the whole side is the go button. It fires at the top. The actual switch is up here, so you can't fire it from the very bottom, but you can fire it from near the bottom. And when you're holding it in your hand, it's just like the comfy place, like the trigger grip, you know. And it doesn't matter which way round you hold it, it fires. So whether you're a lefty, righty, it, do, it doesn't matter. It's just going to work. It is a really nice go button. Echoing what Slack says about the go button, it, it with its rounded corners, it, it fits so well in, in your hand, across the palm and then into, into your fingers. It's just a beautiful device to hold. Right, so for the other buttons, your, your mode button and your plus and minus buttons, they're perfectly fine. They're, they're, they're sort of small and discreet and, and colour match. You know, they work fairly well. You know, we had one weird issue with the button pushes, where we had to reboot the device to get it to change more than 0.1 increment uh, while in TC changing the wattage. But other than that, it, it's been absolutely fine. Um, there is a slight rattle to them, but not that you would notice during sort of normal day-to-day -day operation. Um, it, it, the rattle comes from all of them. You need to hold all the buttons, including the lock switch on top, and then it's silent. But again, during normal operation, it's not annoying. That is something that really annoys me. It's just something I noticed while testing. It's not something you're really going to notice on day-to-day -day usage, I think. And lastly, for the button pushes, like we saw in the up close for the, the actual button pushes video you've just seen, is the physical lock on top, which is a brilliant implementation. It's just great for when you sort of want to be going out and want to lock it, chuck it in your bag or whatever. 
Yeah. Fantastic. Physical lock. I mean, rather than turning your device off or an electronic lock, yeah, this is a physical lock. You feel the button doesn't push. It's really cool. Nice, simple, quick. Well done. Moving along now to the menu operation for the uh, the iStick 100 Watt. It's um, easy. Yeah, so I mean, there's no direct menu, which is a shame. You've got this mode button down here, and I would have liked to have seen a direct menu where you go through to everything rather than having to turn your device off to sort of turn the screen around, things like that. But they're not things you're going to be using often. It's, it's not really a problem. Access to everything is pretty efficient through here. And considering it's got no direct menu, I actually quite like it. So, okay, on to the 510 connector for the device. It's a fairly rigidly sprung 510 connector. The screw threads are good. It, it, it's a good 510 connector. It's, it's not the best in the world, but it's good. I like it. That seems to be what I say for everything. Yeah, it's good. I yeah. like it. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a 510 connector. It's what a, are you going to say? About exactly. It? As it's long it, as you can fucking screw your tank on the top of it. We're happy. <laughs> exactly, and it, it works good. The spring, yeah. Yeah, nice rigid spring in there, so yeah, it's good. I think what's important to, to get across to you guys is the amount that we test it. So I have it first, I, I screw a load of tanks onto it and a load of drippers onto it, then I give it to him to try out, and he screws a load on there, and at the end of it we look at it and say, well, it's still there, and it, you can still screw shit into it. So from that perspective, you know, although we're reviewing it, we've, we've used the shit out of it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's there's not even a mark on here. The screw threads are still perfect. Uh, it's got this sort of little cup round the cup, um, but it's not really atomized aside. It's slightly under that. Yeah. It's obviously to stop the heat just going straight down. And yeah, it, it's great. It, it works really well. So yeah, moving on. Okay, guys, let's talk about temperature control. Out of the box, it does TI stainless steel and another one that I can't remember. Nickel. That, that NI two hundred. But Let's talk to this guy. Yeah, so it, like Tony says, it does the big three, you know, and uh, it does them pretty well. Nickel is a nice warm vape on it, uh, works really well. In fact, they all work pretty good out of the box, and even if they don't, even if they're not to your taste, this, I believe, is the first uh, e-leaf device to come with adjustable TCR. So you've got those memory modes, and yeah, just go in there, adjust your TCR, and it'll be exactly how you want it. This is great. This is yeah, to me, this is what you need for temp control. Now, it's not as advanced as your DNA 200 devices where you can tailor your hit, you know, to have the pre-boost and that. But you set your wattage, you set your temperature, you set your TCR. That will do most people. Uh, it's only people who are proper leak temp vapors who, who are not going to love this. You know, everyone else who just wants it nice basic but really good working temp control device yeah this is it okay moving along to size portability and weight now um it's great there's nothing to it i mean you've got two two 18650s that stack in either side of it and the 18650s take take the sides i'll show them look it's not a lot more and that's the top of your device it's fucking brilliant and without any batteries in it it fucking doesn't weigh a damn thing near enough yeah it's, I, I checked it out earlier without any batteries in and yeah it was like wow there's like nothing here it feels nice and sturdy with the batteries in and a, and a mod uh, atty on top you mm. know so uh, you, you're not it doesn't feel flimsy um, but it is quite lightweight uh, considering you know, the dual 18 650 so yeah it's good uh, in terms of portability you've got that lock you can turn it off so even if you've turned it off it's not going to accidentally five clicks in your bag and turn it on and blow up on you that's really nice touch so that helps with the portability it fits in the hand really yeah. well now until using this device um, previously I would say the cuboid has been the best for fitting in the hand uh, for when you're out and about because it, it just it has that sort of chunky hold it's almost like a relay baton I, I literally you know go running with the cuboid in my hand while I'm walking the dog I end up running after if I've got this this is the best device for sort of just sturdiness to hold I think this has actually overtaken that you know it, it it's just a good fit in the hand <laughs> so portability size and weight all good Moving along now to battery life for the uh, Elif iStick. We know what it is. We're halfway through the review. TC at the end. We know what it is. They know what it is. They know, what it, is. They know it. it says it down there. Anyway, <laughs> early marketing for the device said that um, you, you'd get amazing battery life due to its uh, parallel. Parallel circuitry, yeah. But, you know, again, I think this is marketing spiel. The battery life is good in this, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's It's certainly not bad, but it's not 
oh my god, this is amazeballs, guys. Check out the, you know, I'm using the same batteries in my Snowwolf and I'm getting twice the length out of them on this E Leaf, you know. It's, <laughs> it's not. It, it's pretty much a standard sort yeah. of device and a standard affair. You know, I get about a day out of it with, with the dual. Admittedly, I use other devices in between. Um, but yeah, it, it's fairly efficient on temp control. You know, some devices, when they go into temp control, are shockingly awful with their battery. You just kill the battery, ironically, you know, because where it's doing more calculations yeah. and stuff. Um, temp control is supposed to, you know, everyone says, you know, it's, it conserves battery because you're not firing the wattage all the time. Um, sometimes it doesn't. This one, yeah, it's it's fine. It, it works well. It is good. Um, I'm happy with the battery life, but yeah, it's not going to change the world. So. Next up, battery cover. Uh, it's fine. I like it. So yeah, I mean, they come off like this. They only fit one way round. From or at least when I was trying it earlier, they only fit one way round. But it's fine. I haven't had any sort of coming off of battery door. It is nice and solid, and when you're using it, you're basically holding the battery doors on. Even if you fire it at the top, it doesn't then pop them out at the bottom. I'm very happy with the battery door. Right, next up is the style of the device. Okay, now it comes in three colours. You've got black, grey, which is this sort of, sort of matte silver. You know, it is a silver. I don't care. You can call it grey. It's not. It's silver. Uh, and also... White, <laughs> smooth, <Yeah. laughs> and also <laughs> white. <laughs> I thought it was red. I was sure it was red, and I'm like, oh, no, red it? would have been awesome. I would have got that. Yeah, but it's not in red. It's in white. It's in white. No, it's not grey. Black, white, and grey. Yes, yeah. And we've got grey. Well, yeah, <laughs> I've established that. So aside from your colour options, you know, the style of the device is sort of very reminiscent of like older uh, E-Leaf iStick jobs, you know, and uh, it's nice. You know, the screen there, it looks nice. It looks, you know, it, it's not, well, whoa, crazy out there, but it's just like a nice style. It's fairly gentle. Uh, the shape of it uh, is sort of fairly cool looking, you know, the roundy corners, the roundy edges. Mm -hmm. I quite like it. As styling goes, you know, it's, again, not going to change the world, but, you know, it's nice. Like Slack said, the styling of it, the front is like the E-Leaf 50 watt, and the, the device as a whole is just sort of like the updated version of the iStick 100 watt. Speaking of which, do you want to take it? Yeah, let's take a quick up-close look at this new 100 watt TC versus the old school 100 watt. Okay guys, as promised, here is the comparison video between the original iStick 100 watt versus the E-Leaf's new iStick TC 100 watt. As you can see, very slight height difference, about a centimetre. Uh, sides, again, the new one is slightly shallower. Uh, base comparison, noticeably thinner. This video is probably blurred so I apologise for that. And obviously original has the display and minimal information there whereas the new one has it down the centre as like the 50 watt. Um, not really much else to show you. Back to the studio probably. Right, thanks for that Tone. Yeah, so the style of this one I much prefer to the old 100 watt you know the size is better the it just looks better in my opinion now it's horse of course as you can tell if you like it by looking at it but yeah style's good so as it says on the box the firmware for this device is upgradable you know you just plug a USB into a computer and do it in fact Tony do it Ta -da! okay guys here we are with the quick firmware update as promised um, Using a PC, I don't know about Mac, uh, I don't use Mac, so literally this is just for the PC sort of version. Uh, go on a web page to eleafworld.com, don't worry about the .co.uk web address because they are useless and don't even list the uh, temperature control 100 watt eye stick yet. So go into eleafworld.com, click on the product page for it and scroll right the way down to the bottom and you'll see the download for 
the Windows and the Mac so presumably it is available for the Mac but I ain't got a clue how to use it so you're on your own guys sorry for Windows click click that you'll get the thing come up at the bottom saying you know it's probably trying to infect your system but you know do that at your own risk I did it it's okay but you know it's up to you you'll get the download thing come up and just download it to your desktop once it's downloaded to your desktop it's in a zip folder open it up drag all three out to your desktop and then this is the update software these are the two bin files that actually upload to your iStick if you open this one up it will tell you that it could be harming your system again at your own risk not me telling you to do it um, the thing comes up with your iStick it doesn't matter if the batteries are in it or not in actual fact it does matter if the batteries aren't in it won't work I've tried that already so keep the batteries in and just plug the USB cable into the bottom of it the system will click um, ding to say that it's registered an input you'll see on here that my firmware version is already 1.0 but before I did it it said 1.01 um, you just click the update button it turns your device off for you, runs the, the bin file, updates the firmware and then that's it, it's all done, you disconnect and you're all good. So that's it and probably back to the studio. Okay, onto the warranty of the device. Tony, what have you found out? Uh, standard legal disclaimer, according to the instruction manual inside the box, it's, um, you know, you break it, you bought it sort of thing. Yeah, we're not sure on the warranty period, so hopefully something will flash up on screen now if we've managed to find it. Uh, if not, yeah, it probably comes with some sort of limited warranty. Okay, guys, we've reached that special stage in the show once again where we sum up with pros and cons. As always, we'll start with cons so that we're ending on a high with the pros. Slack has something to interject first. Slack? Okay, as always, we're going to probably list quite a few cons here, but we are being highly critical of the device, and they're not necessarily particularly bad things. We just want you to be aware of them so you can make up your own mind as to how you feel about each individual point. Without further ado, the first con. So it's a 100 watt device. And while 100 watts is great, you know, these are the same two 18650s you're going to be putting in your Snowball for 200 watt or your cuboid or something. And so. You, you just wonder, 100 watts, is that enough? You could have a little bit more for your temp control, get your preheat and stuff like that. It's not necessarily a bad thing, because actually through using it, I found it's perfectly okay, but it's just a little bit strange to release a dual 18650, 100 watt. But, you know, it's fine. Next up, not necessarily con for everyone, but the USB is on the bottom of the device, so you've got to lay your device down to, to plug your USB in doesn't necessarily probably won't bother Tony as much as me because Tony's a tank vapor I vape a lot of drippers so you know obviously with drippers you've got to then take it off just to charge it and while we're talking about cons and charging you can charge your dual 18650s in here through this USB port it says that it requires a one amp uh, plug socket to charge it you know so some devices have you know you can use anything from 0.5 up to 20 amps and it just regulates it in the device this this one doesn't it wants a one amp it also says not to charge them in the device if you can help it it's better for the batteries to take them out and charge them elsewhere which is a shame but you know it's nice to have that usb charging ability isn't it tony top up top up emergency top up we all love an emergency top up i know i do Next up is the uh, fiddle that it is to adjust the, the wattage while you're in temperature mode, temperature control mode. It's just a bit like, is it at the same point? Is it at the same point? Yeah, I mean, that that is, uh, you, you've got, it's like a hair trigger, and it's, you know, and you, you've got to stop, you know, so if you want to adjust your wattage in temp control to a specific wattage, it's going to be a little bit fiddly. It's easy enough to move it up and down, but it, it's not great to set an exact wattage. The next con that I can think of, because I'm probably going to be editing this in the middle somewhere, is um, the fact that it's grey. It's grey. I wanted silver. I bought this thinking that it was silver. It looks silver to it me. It is not silver. It, and it, it looked... depending where I put that video of the side-by-side -side with the original iStick 100 watt, which is silver, well, chrome, well, 
you know, fucking shiny as bastards. Dude, so can't we just call this gunmetal and be done with it? No, it's nowhere near gunmetal. I, again, colour is subjective. Like, people, will, some people are like sort of like a shiny silver, like mm. a chromey silver, and some people are like this. I personally like it. And, uh, yeah, it, it's a shame there's not more colour options for you. But, mm. you know, again, you're going to know whether you like that just by looking at it. Stop right in the middle of it. And while Tony's been a knob and taking a hit, I'm going to chime up the last sort of uh, con, which is the limited vent holes. You've got the, these five holes on the bottom, five holes on the top here. They're not amazing. Tony was like, well, it doesn't matter. The sides will just blow off. Yes, they will. But if your hand's on it when it vents, then uh, you're going to know about it, I reckon. I mean, they're not terrible. You know, I've certainly seen worse devices, but they're not as good as it could be. I would have liked to have seen like another row because that could quite easily clog up with debris in the event of event of event of event moving event. on to pros now for you first up firmware updatable firmware upgradable brilliant about fucking time eLeaf yeah we think this is the first device that eLeaf have done that actually has upgradable firmware so yeah welcome to the 21st century guys Next up on the pros list is the fact that it does temp control on all three out of the box you get nickel your titanium and your stainless steel Next up is the ability to set three TCR modes, which is also 21st century stuff. Yeah, love TCR adjustments. So, yeah. you know, if you don't like the out-of-the-box settings, you tweak it how you like it, how your wire works, you know? So that's great having that. Next up on the pros list is going to be the fact that it's got a bypass or mech mode, you know? That yeah. I like having that feature. It's not something I use that often, but to have it, yeah. because it's quite simple to include, Absolutely. it just seems criminal not to. <laughs> so it's got it, and that's good. Next up is the battery fire door button. Oh, love it. It's awesome. It's like the X-Cube, but better, in my opinion. Yeah. It doesn't have the flashy lights down the side. No, no I do like that. That's a personal taste thing. I do like that on the X-Cube too. Yeah. Uh, however, this, this button works better. One of the ways we were sort of talking about this is I went, Tony, take this. And Tony took it, and he didn't fire the fucking thing. With the X-Cube 2, that would have just gone off when, in the Absolutely. handover. Yeah. And that, that was one of the things I didn't like about the X-Cube 2 button. I like the operation of it. I like it when you're using it out and about, but I didn't like the fact that it's quite trigger sensitive. This one is not. This one, it just works a lot better, I think. The better way to explain this is that with the X-Cube 2, it's got quite a long button push on it but it's got quite a soft button push on it so as soon as you give it to someone and they sort of instinctively clench you're going to be firing it straight away whereas this has got a hard button push but it's also a very shallow button push yeah so because of that it's not difficult to use it's not like you're straining it's not like them cheap 80s hand grips you know <laughs> um it, it, it's fine i really like it yeah yeah it's, it's definitely i'd say this is probably one of the best buttons uh, that i've used on a device while we're talking about the fire buttons, let's talk about the battery doors. Yeah, again, I love it. You know, they work so well, you're holding them on there and they don't rattle. There's no problems with it. It's so nice to have a battery door that just isn't an issue. It says it's nothing, which is how it should be. <laughs> and the lock switch on top as well, which is a brilliant fucking addition. Yeah, it's a physical lock switch. So that's great. This is really unusual to have a physical lock that stops the button physically being pressed. You can turn your device off and lock it, and it's not accidentally going to five clicks in your bag and vent your bag to death, you know? <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah. And lastly, the fact that you can run it with a single 18650 as opposed to two. Yeah, I don't think we've done that on I this I don't think video. we have as well. So just for science, yeah, here we go. Single one, I'm on 46 watts. brilliant and away it goes so yeah that is a standout feature yeah really nice yeah so as you saw it, it fires absolutely fine now when you are in a single battery mode you know single cell it's only going to go up to 75 watt um which is good because you know if you're trying to pull 100 watt off a single cell you're not gonna have a good time um but yeah it, it's great i love that you know if you've only got one battery you know you come from another thing it's, it's brilliant brilliant yeah. idea and probably last on the pros list, the fact that, okay, so the button is on one side, but it doesn't matter which way you hold it. You know, you fire it with the inside of your hand, the outside, so it doesn't matter if you're a lefty or righty, it just fires. And it feels exactly the same both ways round, you know. Mm. It's, it's not a strain or a struggle. Really good design there, really. I like it. Okay, guys, that about wraps it up for our review of the... E-Leaf iStick 100W TC.
by New Leaf. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe because we're all about that shit. Um, if you think we've missed anything out or could be doing anything better, drop us a comment down below because bleep 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 because um, we're all about improvement. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on the social medias, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. If you've got any questions, you can just ask here or on any of those. But for now, thank you very much for watching Smog Vlog. Right, let's look at the button pushes and let's just check the mic actually. <coughs> <coughs> just. Right, let's look at the button pushes on this. Okay, first thing I suppose we're going to need to see is a massive, massive lock up. <coughs> <laughs> Why is there a massive lock up? We come over here, it's the standard affair of five clicks on, five clicks off. Well, it's really difficult to oh, A, hold this. Look at the angle my wrist's at. I'll just do five clicks because it's a five yeah. clicks on, five clicks off. One, two, three, four. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with this possessed piece of shit? Yeah. Fucking making me look stupid. Bloody thing. Right. There's also a few things you can do with the device while it's turned off. So let's go there now. Mm. I can't fucking show you this bit. Here, look at that. <laughs> You've done the unboxing. And I'm bringing this back. Okay, thank you. You good? There you are. Ready? Go. It's like I'm in a massage chair. Just roll, roll, roll. It's like I'm in the fucking twilight fucking zone. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the pace, dude. <laughs> Come on. You ready? You ready? Uh, let's assume yes. Like that. <laughs> Apparently we're starting. <laughs> yeah, that was good, man. Were you just like scratching your ass or something? Oh, I, I don't even know what the <laughs> fuck I was doing. <laughs> was, but then all of a sudden you were taking a hit. Uh, so, while Slack takes a hit off of the... Uh, new mod we're gonna go up close <laughs> with some button pushes <laughs> I completely went fucking blank <laughs> like, we're gonna <laughs> it was like <laughs> fucking tumbleweed in my head <laughs> good look at the screen camera okay on to the 510 connector so <laughs> <laughs> so what, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> I just looked at you. That's but fine. now you know how I felt, you know, for all those fucking videos ages ago. <laughs> we haven't done that for ages. Have we not? No. Good. I must be getting used to you. <laughs> no? <laughs> Later. Later. <laughs> so it's a 100 watt device. Yep. <laughs> I was just checking that was the first. Shush. <laughs> Come on, chuckle monkey. Fuck sakes, we've got to cons and he's still questioning whether it's a fucking 100 watt device. I was checking that was the first con. <laughs> and this is the grey one as well, not the white one. <laughs> it's bell end. Can you stop chuckling so I can finish? No, because it's a it's different a colour watt. now. <laughs> anyway, fuck that shit, it's on to pros. <laughs> We're going proper gangster in this one. <laughs> oh, we? well, apparently you are. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> Moving on to pros. <laughs>